So let me give you some of the reasons why I've seen Eastern Catholics become Orthodox. Um, one reason is this. Sometimes you have somebody who discovers Eastern Catholicism, they attend an Eastern Catholic parish, and they fall in love with it. And they, they learn to love the tradition and learn to love everything about it. And then somebody suggests they start reading books um, on Eastern Orthodoxy, and they start doing that. And, you know, that's not uncommon. I have Orthodox books I recommend to people all the time. Uh, but sometimes the books that they're recommended um, are a little unfair towards Catholicism, to put it mildly. But Catholics are recommending these books. Eastern Catholics are specifically because uh, the books, you know, do do a good job of conveying aspects of the Eastern Christian tradition. But then that Eastern Catholic begins to fall under the assumption that the Orthodox are right about everything, and that we as Eastern Catholics need to believe exactly what the Orthodox believe. Hmm. Now, part of this is 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 based on the understanding that Eastern Catholicism should be an expression of Eastern Christianity in union with Rome, and that Eastern Catholicism should be authentically Eastern. Uh, we've mm -hmm. talked about this before. There have been periods of time where a lot of the Eastern Catholic churches became heavily influenced by the Latin Church and began mimicking the Latin Church. And by the way, that usually happened without the agreement of the Latin Church. Uh, the Latin Church, the Roman Catholic Church, the Pope in particular has all, has typically been pretty vehement that Eastern Catholics need to stay authentically Eastern. That's been mm -hmm. the trend for centuries. Mm -hmm. um, but often what happens is certain Eastern Catholic parishes or Eastern Catholic churches will just mimic the Latin Church and create this problem called Latinization. Now, sometimes people get offended by the word Latinization. It's not offensive. It's not saying there's anything wrong with something that's Latin or Roman, but it's saying that that certain aspects of the Eastern tradition are being replaced by something from the outside that doesn't really fit. So in an effort to reclaim Eastern Christian tradition, uh, a lot of Eastern Catholics have turned towards Orthodox sources, myself included. I mean, uh, I, I spent countless hours reading books on Orthodox theology and Orthodox liturgy and whatnot. But if you embrace those uncritically and say, this is what we believe as Eastern Christians, well, it's hard to remain a Catholic in good conscience in some cases, because here's what happened. The Eastern Christian tradition and the Western tradition are fully compatible, in my opinion. They come from the same well of tradition, the same fathers. Um, but what happened was, in recent centuries, some Orthodox writers have taken a polemical stance, and in some cases, they define themselves against Western Christianity, and they define themselves against Catholicism. So they'll present things in these books that are specifically geared to argue against Catholic positions and Catholic beliefs. Um, but these positions or these these arguments they're making aren't necessarily authentic representatives of the Eastern Christian tradition. Um, very often, they were more modern inventions created in re in response or in mm -hmm. reaction against mm -hmm. Catholic you know developments. Um, but you know the, the the new Eastern Catholic who's reading these books um, starts reading this stuff and they start you know agreeing with it, and for them, oftentimes they have a hard time remaining. Catholic. I've seen that happen. Mm -hmm. Another thing that takes place, though, is sometimes you have the Eastern Catholic who falls in love with the tradition, but then realizes that their particular parish um, is lacking some things. And that happens, um, especially like in the Northeast, the Northeastern United States. The Northeastern United States is often referred to as the, the old country, you know, for a lot of the Eastern Catholic churches, especially like the Ukrainian Catholic Church and the Ruthenian Church. Um, because a lot of the the immigrants initially came to the northeastern United States. And um, a lot of the parishes that were established here, uh, when they were established, were very, very, very Latinized. I mean, a lot of them had no icon screens. Um, they were missing so much. <clears throat> now, over the decades, most of these parishes have restored a whole lot. But in some cases, things are still lacking and there's still work to be done. Mm -hmm. But the new Eastern Catholic... Um, sees this, and he begins visiting some local Orthodox churches, and he encounters things he didn't see before, things perhaps like Vespers, 
or Matins yeah. <clears throat> or, you know, you know, the Akathist. And um, they're like, we don't do this in my Eastern Catholic parish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they begin to want that, that fuller liturgical life. And they begin to think that, well, I, I must become Orthodox because it's the only place I can get the fullness of the Eastern tradition. I've seen that happen. And that's an argument mm -hmm. that's often made. Um, now, my response to that is, yes, Eastern Catholic churches should be full Eastern. Yes, we should restore those services. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but what, but whether or not a parish has, you know, Vespers and Matins, uh, I don't think is the criteria of how authentic it is. I don't think it's the criteria of how spiritually um, viable it is as a parish. I think that's not a fair criteria. And what I would say in a situation like that is, if you feel that strongly that the Eastern Catholic parish should have Vespers or Matins, make it happen. Uh, my 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 personal uh, feeling is that most priests, most deacons would support such an effort. They themselves may not be able to do it. They may uh, have two parishes or three parishes and they're stretched thin. But if some lay people in the parish want to begin celebrating Vespers and they learn the services and do it as a reader service, I think most priests would support it and most deacons would too. And I know a lot of deacons would love an opportunity to lead Vespers or Matins in the absence of a priest or to do it alongside a priest if a priest was there. Um, but the initiative needs to come from the lay people uh, in, a, in a lot of cases. So that's another reason why I've seen people leave.